So last night, Christmas Day, we did a uh, we did a short stream of Persona Five. We did like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And we switched over to Tales of Symphonia for a few hours, and we were doing that, and you know, committing through some Tales of Symphonia shenanigans with Guzma, which is good to get done because that series goes on like far and few between because it's difficult to sort out with everyone's schedules and stuff like that. There's a bunch of conversation like out of out of context right there, um, but the smidge that we did in Persona. It got me curious and invested, and I was gonna switch to, uh, the one game that I don't think we've, uh, done during, like, the last several days yet of, you know, holiday kind of break stuff is near Automata. So, you know, the best balance to achieve would have been this stream being near Automata. But I'm invested in whatever the hell is going on here, and I want to find out what's happening. For anyone who wants a Sparknotes plot summary of what's happening here... We're starting, like, the fourth arc. We need to go steal the heart of someone named Futaba Sakura, who seems to be, like, the adopted daughter of our guardian, who is a shut-in that never wants to, like, go outside or do anything and is, like, really unhappy and stuff. And it's seeming like she's the one that wants us to steal her heart. And, uh, th there's that. And now I'm curious, like, where the hell is, uh, where the hell is this gonna go? What's happening? Also, I think Summer Break is starting in the game. That's the, uh, that's the Spark Notes plot summary. So... I was kind of curious here of what the heck is going to be going on. So rather than streaming the best game for balance and, you know, balancing out a whole bunch of different games at once. Actually, the best balance probably would have been Octopath Traveler Champions of the Content because I haven't streamed that in forever. Whatever. We're doing Persona because I'm... Wait, is my camera frozen? Did I unplug it? Oh, I, I guess it just froze on whatever frame that is. Look at that. I'm like looking forward at the screen seeing something. Did I unplug it? Oh, the cable was a little bit loose. It was plugged in. But, like, here, let's lock that in place so that the cable doesn't get, like, nudged by my legs or something like that. Because if I don't put it in place, it can hang loose a little bit. And, uh, or I could just stream as a uh, frozen frame. <laughs> I'm just, like, really into the game. Look at me. I'm just so dang into it. Oh, man. Well, let's see here. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead. and You know, it's such a meme solution. But it actually works so much of the time. Just turn it off and on again. You know, it's... <laughs> everyone always calls it like, you know, the... We're kind of regards it as the meme solution where it's like, Oh, do you try turning it off and on again? But that's actually just straight up what works like so much of the time. You know, like that's what just fixed my camera there. So, I mean, yeah. So, I think where we left off, um, Morgana was at Futaba's place. And we were like, where the heck is Morgana? And Morgana dipped out of there. So maybe when we sleep, we're going to have like Morgana up here and be like, hey, I grabbed some intel. Um, yeah, I was just very intensely watching Joker at work as he uh, as he goes about standing here and big chilling. It's just fascinating stuff. I should go to bed. Um, sure. I guess we're doing that because I we established that I couldn't do anything with this time, right? Sleep without even wondering where I was. I'm surprised he didn't come in through the window. Take it the chief told you about Futaba, and then you guys disbanded in relief for now. Uh, where were you? Hmm. You can't underestimate my intel gathering skills, you know. I was checking out the chief's house. I didn't think our Alibaba would be so young. Um, so they are indeed the same person. What was she like? Oh. She had long hair and a pretty young sounding voice. Well. I say young, but I think she's probably about the same age as you guys. At the very least, she's surely no amateur. She completely overheard your conversation with the chief. And she can hack into our chats, too. Even if she can't take Medjed down directly, she might have some kind of lead on them. What if she is them? I don't know. Um, I don't know, just who is she? In any case, we'll need to rely on Futaba to get closer to Medjed. Let's meet up again tomorrow. How about we do it in here? It's way too hot outside. Anyway, meet up again tomorrow. Sure you let Don't you know. usually uh spend the night here anyway? I guess you mean with the full group. Is what you must mean there. Oh, we're going to the future again. Wow, it's not that far in the future, right? It's sometime past September. That's all we uh that's all we know there. Maybe in September even. It's a nice Futaba month. Sakura. She had one of these palaces? Hold on. I guess so. While Medjid was targeting you, you chose to deal with someone completely unrelated to them? Um... 
Mm, I were an unseen enemy. What do you want from me? Then how was Medjid? What you said about the Sakura family generally falls in line with our investigation. It appears you aren't feeding us a false testimony. Um, <laughs> finally listening. <laughs> if you're lucid enough for jabs, you can get back to your story. Oh, I love telling my story. As to how the Phantom Thieves dealt with Medjed since their identity is unknown. If you tell me something coherent, I may be a little more willing to believe you. What hasn't been coherent? Seems like Nijima is starting to seriously listen to what I have to say. What, does this confidant go up? Yeah, it's just one of those, like, story ones that goes up, I guess. Alright, rank two. I don't know what perks I'm gonna be getting from this, All but right. yeah, I guess it's just one of those story progression ones. Didn't even say that I'd get more EXP the from Fusion there. in the home of Wakaba Ishiki's daughter. <laughs> what a coincidence. No. Perhaps it's fate. Regardless, we I don't even know who that is. Waste. Continue with your story. Okay, fine. Long black screen. Oh, here we go. Magic is dangerous. It's Monday. I didn't even get my fun drink on that uh, on that Sunday. But these are all just like free days now, because it's a uh, because it's summer break. Apart from this one Monday where we need to come in for an assembly. So there's only an emergency meeting right when summer break is starting. I guess I need to set some rules when the world's eyes are on us because of the Phantom Thieves. Stuff like, don't do anything that'll hurt the school's reputation. Spend your summer break quietly. I can't. I can't stay quiet with all this excitement going on. Medjid's statement was insane. People of Japan, you must not worship the Phantom Thieves, they said. Could just be a joke. There's talk that this could lead to the biggest leak of private data to date. I wonder if they're gonna target another site. I'm curious to see how the Phantom Thieves react. It's what I'm looking forward to most this summer. It'll be the perfect escape for my exam studies. The Phantom Thieves need to take action. They're the ones Medjid is after. <sighs> this is bigger than I thought. Can't leave this be. Uh, don't be hasty. We got plenty of time. I applaud your cool headedness, but it'll be too late if we wait until after something's happened. If Medjid does something drastic, what will people think of us? Let's get this assembly out of the way. We have our own business to attend to. Morning! Oh, hey, Harmonia. Morning. Is there something over there? Come on, let's go. We're gonna be late. What, was I staring at something? Is there something over... Huh? You what now? Um, assembly during summer vacation. Are they crazy? They are a little bit crazy. Um, our school's done for. I don't care what the principal has to say. Yeah, maybe she thought he was staring at something because he was standing still, just like overhearing those students. They're so stupid. I wish I could change their hearts. Why not make a post? Our request might be taken. I don't know if that's how, uh, if that's how that works. All right. Oh. I guess we had the assembly. Oh, we don't even see what the assembly is. Oh, we got the Big Bang Burgers. Huh? Did you have school too, Yusuke? I'm doing laundry, so these are the only clothes I had to wear. You really should buy a couple more outfits. We had all that money from the last treasure we sold, but we used it on food rather than uh giving some to Yusuke. I'll start. It looks like Butaba was listening in on LeBlanc. But why would she want to listen in on the cafe? I have no idea. It's just like Boss said. She's a tough nut to crack. In any case, her hacking skills will be absolutely necessary if we wish to stand up to Medjed. Going by what she has told us, we may even be able to identify who they are. I honestly think that it may be her. Trust in her skills for now, then. Anyway, we found out that Futaba has a palace. But can someone who isn't evil have one? How do you Back define evil? Head. A palace is the materialization of distorted cognitions brought about by strong desires. That's all. It just so happens that a lot of warped people turn out evil. She's so young, though. The pain she's gone through must be the cause of her distortion. Maybe that has something to do with why she calls herself Alibaba. According to the chief story, Futaba has auditory and visual hallucinations, right? There's a chance those are related to some important memories she's holding. It's hard to explain, but those memories may have been warped by the distortions. Basically, we just gotta steal her treasure, right? Oh, well, yeah. So do we all agree about taking on Futaba's palace? She's asked us to do so. I don't think that part is an issue. If we heal Futaba's heart, it will not only help Boss, but she can then assist us with Medjed. I agree. 
I've been wondering about how Boss said a lot happened after Futaba's mom died, too. Hold on a second. Our investigation of her palace may not go like anything we've done up to this point. Why's that? Having an individual ask you to steal their heart is an extremely irregular case. There's no telling what the palace ruler's disposition will be like, or the distortion that'll be there. We may run into some unforeseen situations. Do you still want to go in? <laughs> it's gonna be a loser of choice, so I'm just curious. What should we do? What would happen here? Are you afraid? Now is no time to be indecisive. <sighs> we gotta do this. Yeah, illusion right. choice. Let's just make sure we're cautious. Well, let's get cracking on those keywords, huh? The ones we have at the moment are Futaba Sakura and Sojiro Sakura's house. We got the who and the where, so all that's left is the what, right? Let us try going to their house first. Boss is busy running the cafe, isn't he? We should make sure he doesn't suspect anything. I don't know what sounds like a reclusive place for the wear. Maybe like an island or something, or maybe just like a. What would it be the name for like a computer den place? Like I just call my space here like my office. I don't know if that would uh, if it'd be something like that, um, some sort of computer facility maybe. I don't know. Um, I hope so. That has to be the case. I definitely want this mission to succeed. But like the most we can retrieve Futaba's standard medals, reclusive kind of I thing that comes to my mind initially is an island. In any case, but you know, if she's all computer themed, I doubt that they'd like do that. You really do but it's a good guess, right? Don't you? Um, who knows? You sure live up to my expectations. I guess this is from result from Morgana. Is this one going up too? Cool. Bam. Ace tools allow you to craft all infiltration tools. Oh, okay. So there's other tools that can be crafted now. All right. Okay. Now we're in a uh, that there, yada yada. Hey, they went on without us. Let's hurry and catch up to them. Cool. Now the last keyword. She's a shut-in, so we just gotta figure out what she thinks her house is. If she can't get out. Maybe a prison? Perhaps oh, that was a good guess. With an unknown exit. Hmm. Maybe an oasis? An oasis. So far. In that case, how about hell? Uh, we don't have nearly enough clues. If only we could ask her directly. Maybe it is an island? Come on, let's oh. go see Futaba. But what will we say to get in? What do you mean? We're sneaking in. You have to be joking. Won't the door be locked for sure this time? I'll take care of that. Oh, and I figured out where Futaba's room was when I snuck in last night. What if we run into Boss, though? There's no way we'll be able to avoid his questions. He's at work now, so I think we should be fine. Oh. Getting cold feet, Makoto? Don't Doesn't at work mean at the cafe? Where we like were just hanging out? So we would have gone like right past him as we go into his house. And he'll just assume that we're not going to his house. Willing to speak with him? Very well. Let's do this. Are we gonna be able to chat it out? Private, do not enter. Futaba chan You're in there, right? There's no answer. Futaba chan are you there? I'm sorry for being startled and screaming yesterday. It was so dark that I got scared. No reaction whatsoever. Ah, this is gonna be hard. You're listening, right, Alibaba? Is it Alibaba? Why are you here? Why is she only reacting to that name? Mm -hmm. You're Futaba Sakura, aren't you? She's not responding again. Does she not like us saying her name? We don't have time to dally around. We need her keyword before dealing with Alibaba's identity. We want to learn more about you. If we don't do so, we can't steal your heart. The reason why we came here is because we need the keyword to enter your palace. That's why we want to talk with Futaba Sakura herself. 
and not Alibaba. You don't have to show yourself. Just answer some questions for us. Chat messages are fine. Okay. All right then. Should Our I... leader, the guy who lives in LeBlanc Should I still be doing the deep hacker voice thing that I was doing before? Try and get a uh -oh. keyword out of her. And what do you want to hear? Um, I mean, it's gonna be like basically illusion of choice, but uh, this is like the most direct thing that would give us the best answer, right? What What's this house to you? House is a house. Looks like you should ask something different. Uh, what do you want to hear? Um, I was living in this house. It's painful. Um, mm -hmm. why? I don't know. Looks like you should ask. Yeah, yeah. It's painful. Um, do you hate it? I don't. Looks it's painful. Why not go out? I can't leave this place. I'm going to die here. Uh, die? Is this going to continue? Um, why do you think that? Why? This place is my tomb. Tomb? You think that's it? Try entering tomb! Okay, Island was a good guess though, right? I don't know. <laughs> we got it. Was that enough? Yes. It was plenty. You haven't forgotten your promise of helping us if we complete your request, right? I haven't. We made a deal. Well then, let's hurry up and go. And clicky. Wait, would she be You idiot! Don't activate it here! Yeah, I was about to say, would she be close enough that she'd get pulled in as well? That be a thing? She enters her own palace? Is that what this is gonna do? Wait, and we're not in our costumes. It's a desert. Yeah, we see that. Wait, what the? Our, our clothes are still the same? Futaba herself is asking us to steal her heart. It'd be odd if she saw us as a threat. If she doesn't see us as an enemy, then your clothes don't change. That's how it works. But more importantly, I told you to be cautious. Why'd you activate it like that? Is that why we ended up in a desert? Where's the tomb? Oh, it's so damn hot here. Even though we entered right in front of her room, we didn't end up inside it. She must really want to keep people away from her. Mm, I see. What a bleak feeling this place has. The complete opposite of Kaneshiro's bank. Let's hurry up and get going. Where's the palace? Is it that way? Oh yeah, there's something shiny. A tomb in the desert. I see. Anyway, let's make our way there. Isn't that kind of far? Are we gonna walk? Of course not. My paws will get burned. I've been waiting for this. I'll make sure to put the AC on full blast. You're so considerate. <laughs> right. All right. Let's roll. Beats opening the windows to the hot desert air. <sighs> hey, On, can I have a drink? Didn't you have mineral water? I drank it already. <sighs> How are the guys? There we go. Shh. 
It's so hot. The AC ain't working at all. What the hell was that lukewarm air about? That was the best I could do, so quit your yapping. It's just like my car in a nutshell. Really? You are so half-assed. The AC barely works in my car. You want to fight, punk? Sucks on a hot day. And the heat barely works hey, either, which sucks up. in the cold winter. It's hot, so don't make me more irritated. Basically, the temperature would be related stuff in my car just really does not work that well at all. So I get hey, that feel. A pyramid's a tomb, right? Yes, it's a pharaoh's tomb. That's how it's mostly known. There are a variety of theories on it. For instance, it's even said to be a device for reviving the dead. Reviving the dead? Hmm? It's beautiful nonetheless. It's perfectly conformed to the golden ratio. Hey guys, can we go in already? I'm gonna melt. Oh, okay, man. so we're out here now. So friggin' hot. Come on, let's go inside. Oh, the stupid auto advance. Yeah, that last scene. <laughs> I look at that, I'm just like, why? Why is this a video game I'm streaming right now? Um, I mean, what team do I want? This is just like the team that I was grinding with there. Um, and I guess I should uh, switch to this layout. Oh, the doggy cam doesn't need to be on. I turned that off by just like force of habit, I guess. Um, also, I think that the... Um, yeah, I was still set to the Christmas outfit, but you can't even tell. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. That's what I'm gonna do there. There we go. Yeah, there's no longer Christ mass. Um, it's cool that they went with a pyramid for the tomb palace. Yeah, that actually is pretty neat. So are we gonna have, like, all kinds of mummified thingrabobs in there? What's this way? Oh, I can't even go that way. How about this? What's this here? Chat's off. Oh. Oh, I... It, w it was on, it just wasn't showing because Streamlabs is a perfect platform with no bugs or flaws whatsoever. Um, is it just like a way to slide down? So I had to turn it off and on again and then it worked. A desert with a pyramid and an oasis is quite a sight. Looks like there's quicksand down below. What? But it shows like I can take this path. Man. Well, <laughs> it feels weird being in, you know, this outfit for uh, this section. And now his run looks weird. Like, his run looked good with his uh, outfit. But, like, this, it just looks weird. You know, the, uh, <laughs> hello, hello, Arduous Horde. How are you doing today? How go things? Um, town and distance. Hey. Huh? See that sea we passed by on the way here? Hmm. We probably don't need to concern ourselves with it, though. I guess that's the treasure in the pyramid. Okay. We. Oh. And here's the, uh, here's the little oasis return point. Too early to head back now. Okay. There's that white bar on the left side of the screen in Scarlet Violet. Shows up way too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It seems like on the day one version when I played on patch, it would also appear on, like, the top, bottom, and sometimes seldomly on the right side, but more frequently on the top and bottom. After I patched it, like, now that's version 1.1, it doesn't seem to happen anymore. Except the left one. The left one still happens all the time. Just the other places on the screen it doesn't really seem to happen anymore. <laughs> that left one is still, uh, is still there. We can... We can change our team around at any point, so we'll see what dudos are weak to around here, I guess, from Tabas Palace. So this is how she thinks of that house. Indeed. Who knows what may await us within. What is your call, Joker? Shall we head inside? Show I up in cutscenes. Oh boy, what a game. Okay, okay we'll find out more about Futaba's secrets in here, right? Yes. Oh, thinking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet reminded me about how yesterday, you know, when hanging out with uh, my mom's side of the family at like the end of the day during Christmas Day. Um, how I was the only one that was, you know, playing something else that wasn't Pokemon playing Persona here, grinding in that in Mementos. Um, and thinking about hanging out there reminded me that last stream, I was in the middle of telling, like, a short story. I was gonna say something that had happened earlier in the day, but, like, stuff happened and I completely forgot about mentioning it. I mentioned it during Tales of Symphonia, but I never mentioned it during, a during this that I was originally gonna mention it during. So I may as well do it now before I forget. Not even right. I mean, that game of Primo Triggers every time they change camera to a cutscene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, probably your second favorite palace thematically. It seems pretty cool so far. But before I go down there, hold on, my little, uh, my little tale. Um, so, towards the end of hanging out there, I remember that, like, the topic of conversation, my little cousin, like, the younger of my two little cousins, was talking about how 
<laughs> Apparently she had put like in her Discord profile, like cousin of Acoustic Harmonia or something like that. And she said that ever since doing that, she's been getting like friend requests up the yin yang because I'm a famous YouTuber. And I was like, what? But I, I don't get as many friend requests as you're describing. I get like one friend request by like a rando a month, sometimes twice. But she was like, oh, it's at like 300 plus now. And I was like, that's that's not because of me. That is that is definitely not. Um, I'm not a... I'm not a famous YouTuber or anything like that, you know, I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, after talking about, like, you know, channel and YouTube kind of stuff's there, one of my cousins who was visiting from BC, so, like, the next province over, who had known that I do content stuff, was like, oh, um, like, what's your channel? I should look you up and stuff like that. Um, and I was, <laughs> I don't mind him knowing what my channel is, but yesterday, that day specifically, I was very put on edge about uh <laughs> about giving my uh channel name because you want to know one of the videos that went up yesterday yesterday we published the xenoblade chronicles waifu tier list that thing that we did randomly during one of these persona streams <laughs> like a few sessions ago when that randomly came up at like two or three in the morning one night or something like that i wasn't even sure if i was gonna upload it but then i was like you know what let's just publish it christmas day for funsies so i did that <laughs> and the day that he was asking about like my channel, it's like, oh no, this is like the worst possible day you could ask about that kind of thing. Just imagine going to my channel for the first time, clicking the videos tab, and one of the first things you see up there is like the Xenoblade Chronicles waifu tier list and thinking that's a normal type of content I do. It's like, oh no! Anyway, I was gonna tell that last stream, but then like stuff happened and I forgot, so I've, t I've told it now. Um, but yeah, a people will call you a famous YouTuber. I don't know why. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I still remember last night when someone new came into the Discord server and I said welcome and they were like a celebrity response to me. I was like, wait, what? I'm not, I'm literally not though. You know, um, with your, <laughs> with your cousin on you being famous, the numbers talk. I, I really don't think that, you know, having a lot, a lot of views on, you know, a couple specific videos means that like i as like an entire channel and brand of all that uh, all that particularly well known or anything like that you know i uh you know in terms of consistency what i care more about is like the amount of consistent community that there is and how many people are like stopping by on a regular basis stuff like that in terms of that perspective like it's still like a pretty small close-knit community which i'm fine with it's nice and chill and stuff like that we get to have like conversations and things um but you know um <laughs> what you you what now catch that and save immediately in that uh in that a case hey look part of the text kind of blends in on ryuji's hella white forehead so if anyone can't read that on the stream screen well sucks to suck but it's so nice inside this place air conditioned or something um maybe because futaba's room in reality has ac pumping through it either way this is a relief ah clothes still haven't changed even now this has never happened to us before what to it is refreshing that she doesn't see us as a threat, but we are completely surrounded by walls. I guess this is a tomb. It's probably not made to be easy to get into. Anyway, let's explore. Wait, you prob- I could probably save outside, right? Because that would count as the starting point. I managed to get inside, so let's explore at least a bit deeper. Because I was just like, if we fight someone and lose, I don't know where my last save would be. It would be a, like the beginning of this stream. Yeah, well, I don't have over a million views on all my views either, is the thing. I have over a million on one! Just one. It might become too soon with the BDSP video essay. That might hit that in the near future. So I might be able to get two. But like, you know. We'll see how the Scarlet and Violet one goes. My Pokemon essay seem to really hit it off. Also, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the stance with like video essays and stuff. You know, the ones that get like the most viewership are like, you know, big topics that I go in depth with. Like big gaming industry kind of IPs. Like... A lot, there was a lot of people into Roller Coaster Tycoon there, for example, or Pokemon is evidently the biggest one. Um, and while I enjoy doing video essays on, you know, more niche topics like how AI is portrayed in video games and what it means for the future, or the use of history in historical video games, I love doing videos like that, but, you know, it's not the kind of thing that anyone's going to be searching for. No one's going to, like, type that into the search bar and find my video. That's just the kind of thing that anyone who's already on my channel is going to find there. So, I'm thinking about potentially making more, like, game review kind of style stuff that helps, like, with discoverability and stuff. And when it comes to editing on this channel, I mentioned in the uploads channel recently, 
on the uh, Discord server, how the past year I kind of shifted focus away from video essays a little bit to focus on uh, the Minecraft series, Peculiar Potions here, where we haven't even gotten potions yet. Um, and uh, I wanted to focus on that for a while and see what I could do with that. And it's something that I am passionate about and do want to continue, but I recognize that it's not the kind of thing that's really going to be growing like this as a business. Right now, I'm at a stage in life where, you know, I'm not doing a full course load in university. Right now, I'm just kind of more so focused on, you know, getting through these various aspects of my life bit by bit and just trying to like see where I can take this and stuff, you know. So what I'm thinking when it comes to Minecraft stuff is I already have a midpoint in mind for the story of that and for the series being episode 30. Uh, I'm working on episode 24 right now. All the recordings are done. I just have to edit, like, the intro, and then that should be done. Um, and then I'll just have, you know, like, six more to make. So I'm thinking that I am going to keep committing to Minecraft Peculiar Potions until the midpoint, so I can have, like, the definitive point where it's like, yep, this is a good place to end it off at, and then just come back when I'm, like, feeling comfortable with it and I have the time for it and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to shift focus back to video essays for a while. So, yeah, the last year has been more so focused on Minecraft stuff than video essay stuff. So I'm going to commit to that midpoint. And I'm going to shift the focus back to video essay stuff for Minecraft stuff. Take a break from Minecraft stuff for a while. Eventually come back. Because, again, I never like leaving stories unfinished on this channel. I don't know if when I eventually come back for season 2, if it'll be like 30 episodes long like the first one. Because this took me a long time. You know, well over a year to even get this far. So it's like, okay, maybe it should be a little bit shorter for me to wrap up the... Uh, <laughs> for me to wrap up the story definitively but that's my plan and i want to uh, do more video essays on just game stuff you know the things that people will recognize like i've been working on a little bit of a video essay script for mario plus rabbits for example that i might do one on um i have a long script made for xenoblade chronicles 3 to the point that you know talking about the story alone is you know itself a bazillion chapters of each of the individual aspects but, you know, that's going to take me so long to make that I'll probably just wait until the full DLC comes out so I can talk about the full thing. Um, but I think I already have, like, a 30-page script for a Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and I've only just recently started typing about the gameplay in it. Um, I might like to do one on the, uh, on the story of Assassin's Creed Unity and the arguments that it made after I was fascinated by that. Um... And there was all those things that I recorded when I was in Italy. When I was in Italy, I recorded, like, the intro to a whole bunch of aspects on Assassin's Creed. Because I was like, oh, I should do a video essay while I'm over in Italy. And, like, what would be the most fitting there? And I was like, oh, Italy, Ezio, um, Assassin's Creed, let's do that. Um, so I have, like, an intro to a whole bunch of, like, Assassin's Creed topics done, filmed in Italy. Like, literally, I have a thing that I recorded on this stupid, like, whoops, I almost pulled my camera out there. On this stupid, like, selfie stick tripod thing, Bob, in the ruined city of Pompeii, where I talk about the way that Assassin's Creed uses, like, known historical events and disasters, like, like, the destruction of Pompeii, for example, to write its fictional game story. Like, for example, in Assassin's Creed Rogue, the earthquake in Lisbon and whatever year it was there, um, they wrote it in Rogue being like, oh yeah, this real earthquake happened because of our fictional game story and, you know, stuff like that. So I literally have, like, all these intros recorded, and I was thinking about just doing, like, a big video essay on all these things I want to chat about with Assassin's Creed, but now I'm wondering if maybe I should do, like, a whole bunch of smaller videos that are individual topics, like, how does Assassin's Creed use history? How did its story adapt over time? Um, stuff like that, that I have, like, an intro to a whole bunch of sections recorded while I was in Italy. You know, that's something that I should probably do. <laughs> Otherwise, that footage just goes unused. Because I record a lot of things in Italy. And, you know, it kind of saddens me to think, like, huh, so all this footage is going to go, like, unused and unseen, like, forever? Because, I don't know. Uh, these things go pretty far. So I took goddamn many. Don't ask for too much. You should be happy we're not being attacked as, as we ascend. Oh. More importantly, I can totally sense the treasure head. We're getting pretty close now. Wait, so do you just wander up to the treasure and it'll be there? There'll be some sort of trick though, right? You know, there's gotta be something that makes it more difficult. These stairs seem to be headed into the heart of the pyramid. I wonder if that's where the treasure waits. Let's go. Well, time to keep climbing then. Let's go. So, you know, I have- Whoops, I turned that on by habit. So I have like a whole bunch of ideas and stuff like that that I want to pursue in regards to video essays. Like, I'm gonna have to commit to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video essay first. Which, it sounds like Eagle started working on chapter 1 today. Is what it, uh, is what it sounds like. 
So you could say that like editing is already starting, just not in my hands. Um, so it's in a, so it's in progress. So I'll commit to that first. But yeah, I have a whole bunch of ideas when it comes to video essay stuff. So I suppose you could welcome us into here after all. Here, I'll show uh, the text and stuff. Um, and something else that I've thought about doing is doing video essays just on individual aspects about games. Or like an argument that, you know, some sort of aspect of a game might make. Or some subplot. Like, I basically did that with the Live Alive essay with, like, the arguments that I made about AI. That would probably be the one with the most real-world implications I'd ever make. But I've thought about making smaller ones like, uh, like, Groose from Skyward Sword, for example. What kind of arguments does Groose's character make about, you know, being happy with, you know, how things turn out for you in life, even if it's not the way that you had initially hoped, so. you know? That's, uh, that was one that I've thought about doing. Like, maybe just individual aspects of stories like that. And I've mentioned before that I've thought about, uh, you know, doing one on Persona 5 Mishima and how that relates to content creation and people that are like, Oh, by, uh, by pursuing content creation and getting big, I'll earn, the, like, the social status that I deserve, like Mishima tries to do, uh, like Mishima tries to do in this game. You know, so that's something that- Is the chat not working again? There we go. Yeah, it's something that I very much like to, uh, that I'd like to do there. So maybe once we've beaten this game, this might be on my mental list as well as, you know, an individual character slash aspect of a story to do a video essay on. Because, you know, as someone that's gone down the path of content creation and stuff, it's like, huh, that's, uh, that's important arguments that this game seems to be making. Because it seems like Mishima, to me, is the kind of dude that's like, ah, by, you know, being the head of this uh, Phantom Thieves fan site, this is going to get me the social status and recognition that I strive for, you know? And he just ends up being let down so far. I'm sure since, you know, this is a video game where, you know, we're probably going to end up being, like, the big heroes and famous by the end. Maybe it'll turn out that he does get the social status that he deserves. And it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what path this game's story takes for Mishima. I'm really intrigued to see where it'll, uh, where it'll go. Hmm? Someone's there. Ah! Hey, is this? That's Futaba's shadow. It isn't the real her. Oh yeah, you've seen her face. True. I mean, what if it is the real her? Because didn't we go into here like right next to her room? So wouldn't she be close by? I guess we've uh, okay. I guess we've gone into uh, you know, palaces right next to public crowds before. Hey, say something. Don't be like that. I'm sorry, Futaba-chan. It's okay. There's no need to be scared. So, can you tell us where your most treasured possession is? This is going nowhere. <sighs> Let's just leave her. Will you guys shut up for a bit? Those, Those who, who plunder, plunder my tomb, tomb. Why, why have you come? She talked, but... What are you saying? You want us to steal it, right? If you believe you can steal it, then try as you might. It's rather defiant sounding. Perhaps this is that Sundere thing where someone is harsh or sweet <laughs> depending on the mood. Considering the state that my palace is in, there is no way that you can steal it. Creepy child. You killed her! You're a plague! What are these voices? Murderer! Why don't you say something? Murderer? You're the one who killed her! It's your fault! This is horrible. Hey, the hell is this? Don't come Don't near me! Don't stand there! Say something! Your fault! Murderer! That's, That's right. right. I did it. What? I am the one who killed my mother. What was that? My mother exists here. I will remain here. I will do so until I die. Our clothes. She sees us as a threat now. What's going on? Hmm? This again? Creepy child. You killed her. You're a plague with that murderer. Man? Why don't you say You're something? You're the one who killed her. Killed mom. I don't deserve to be alive. This place is a tomb. I'll die here. That's right. Die! Don't come near me! Don't 
is bad. I'm having a hard time getting a grasp of our situation. We should regroup and... What now? Bad, bad, bad. We got Temple of Doom. <laughs> I think that's the one. I used to have that Indiana Jones Lego set. <laughs> like the rolling boulder. Oh, this is a voice actor. We're safe. That was too close. Wait. Now what? Even if we want to ask Futaba what's going on, it seems the door is shut. What should we do? Maybe it shuts when she has those, like, panic attacks? Um, and opens when not? I think our best option is retreating for now. This won't be as simple as we expected. Why don't we prepare a little more, then come back. Um, hmm. Vote now on your phones. You're right. True. Then it's a treat for now. We'll return to the palace another day. Okay, this is a interesting, different one, huh? Well, it's evening. The date that Medjid is set for the alleged cleanse is 821. That day is fast approaching. Oh, we have plenty of time. Phantom thieves, whom they singled out, have not made any notable actions at this time. Will Medjid carry out their cyber terrorism? In order to stop them, we need to help Futaba Sakura before the 21st. Yeah, that's Our lots of time. It's about two days prior, so the 19th. Okay, it's still lots of time. Up in Shibuya, then come in here like three the pain, weeks. Right? Let's make this place our hideout for a while. Um, vote now on your phones! Is everyone fine with this place being our next hideout then? We must take care not to be discovered by Boss. I love how we're just gonna use uh, Sojiro's cafe as the hideout to plot how we're gonna steal the heart of his daughter. His adopted Man, daughter, but you know. It's gonna be one crazy summer vacation. We're dealing with international hackers and looking for a treasure in a pyramid. How can you be enjoying this? This is a crisis of whether or not our group continues on, you know? I know that. That reminds me. While we were in the Mona car, you were staring at me with a dirty look, you perv. Shut up. It was a great view. You guys were looking too, am I right? Indeed. The pyramid's golden ratio was truly <laughs> a sight to behold. Used to gaze a real bad at culture. You know what I'm talking about. I wasn't staring, Lady On. I'm a gentleman, after all. You were a car. that you weren't, but that you couldn't since you were transformed, am I right? <sighs> Will we be all right like this? Um, your hideout has moved from the Shibuya Taikyu building access way to the Yongen Jaya. However, it's pronounced Cafe Leblon. Not again. Oh, is that her mother? Well, this is gonna be a very different palace. Well, that sucked. Is doing this really going to help us do something about Medjet? Do they truly intend to follow through on their threat? It'd be a shame if our efforts were a waste. Medjet will definitely make a move. Palipaba! I'm checking in on your progress. How much longer will it take? Your heart is more problematic than we had anticipated. Hey, Palipaba! Can you really do something about Medjet? Of course. Fortunately, we have next to no evidence to support that. Your work will be rewarded, I promise. Besides, you have no other option, do you? I suppose that's true. Can you do stuff like take us down a server? Show us? Hey, don't start any trouble. That's all it would take to convince you? Alright, I can ask that you take care of this quickly. Until then. Or I ask, but... No, I can ask, whatever. Wait, are you ditching us again? This is troubling, but... We need to do what we can at the moment. I have concern for Futaba herself during all this. 
Man, why does this have to be during summer vacation? He was just hyped about it a second ago. They don't have any other choice. Monia Kuhn, as always, we'll leave it all we'll leave it to you to call us together. The sight of her palace bothers me too. We have to do this. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see how this will play out. I'm getting texted again, I'm popular. Hey, listen up, this is horrible. Fan site is gone. I try to access the URL, but it says that page doesn't exist. Through my labor has completely disappeared. Is Utaba proving like her hacking prowess? Oh, do you think it's because of Medjid? Um, no, it's Alibaba. <laughs> huh? It's Alibaba. Anyway, this has to be Medjid's doing. It's supposed to be some kind of penalty for cheering for the Phantom Thieves? But wait, they're totally jumping the gun. There's still time until the cleanse. Hold on, something came up. Is this proof enough for you? What's that supposed to mean? You think it's a virus? Oh. Um, calm down. Well, uh, looks like everything's back to normal. Sorry for making a fuss about all this. I'm going to try and look into it a little more, though. See you. Was that Alibaba proving what she said earlier? Talk about a crazy thing to pull off. I guess so. Is it going to be one of those days where a train have to come back from another world? You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty healthy for now. I don't have the freaking game system. I don't have any new DVD to watch. I guess we're reading a book again. I'm almost out of books to read. Um, book on speed reading. Yeah, there's the knowledge ones. I have with baseball skills to enjoy stuff in Chinatown. Um, also knowledge, efficiency. I don't know. Batting science is just like an activity to also prove, improve efficiency. I don't know. Let's do tidying the heart. Sure. Let's read up. The secret to decluttering is a pure and serene heart. Mm. Is this book really about cleaning? Or is it training you to become a monk? I learned a lot about monastic medieval monks in my past history class. Still got time to read. Let's go a little further. Gaze upon your clutter with the heart detached from desire. With a heart detached from desire. The answer will then come to you. Wow. Hmm. So you finished reading Tidying the Heart. Cleaning is a way to speak to your heart. I've never thought of it that way. Reading this book must have taught you how to contemplate and think more efficiently, mm -hmm. huh? Oh yeah, look at that. Most, my social stats are looking real good here. You know, apparently there's three semesters in this game. We just wrapped up the first semester. Technically, I think there was two semesters in the initial Persona 5, but in Persona 5 Royal, there's three. So we're what? Like a third through the game, you could say? And my social stats went from, you know, five ones to three, three, four, four, four. So, you know, I don't think we're going to have to worry about maxing out our social stats. Well, I guess we should go to sleep. Staying up too late isn't healthy, you know? Like, our social stats are looking great. 